millions of years. Lyell is the primary guy responsible for inventing what today is known as the geologic column. How many have ever heard of the geologic column before? They divided the earth up into layers and gave them names, you know. Uh, Cenozoic, Mesozoic, Paleozoic, Archaeozoic, all that kind of stuff. Maybe you saw the movie Jurassic Park, named after the Jurassic layer, okay? Each layer of rock was given a name and an age and an index fossil. Now keep in mind, all this was done in 1830 before there ever was a carbon dating, potassium argon dating, rubidium strontium dating, lead 208, lead 206, uranium 235, uranium 238. None of those had even been thought of. So they didn't determine these great ages by any radiometric decay method. They just picked the numbers out of the clear blue sky. It's a fact the earth has many layers of sedimentary rock. That is just a fact. You can see them all over Tennessee here. How'd they get there? Well, there are two interpretations. One group says the layers formed slowly over millions of years. The other group says, no, these layers are all from the flood in the days of Noah. And again, they're always trying to erase that line between the two and make their interpretation become part of the fact. And it's just not, okay? It's just their interpretation, that's all. The geologic column is actually the Bible for the evolutionist. The only place you'll ever find it is in the textbooks. It doesn't exist. This guy admits it. He said, if there were a column of sediments, uh, unfortunately, no such column exists. Did you know there is no geologic column? If there was, it'd be 100 miles thick. It doesn't exist. It's one of the lies in the textbooks. And actually, all of evolution is based on this lie right here. This is one of the most serious ones, in my opinion. It's true the Earth has layers. That's not the question. Okay? How did they get there, though? I mean, if that layer sat there for 10 million years waiting for the next one, don't you think it's going to rain once in a while in 10 million years? Why are there no erosion marks between the layers? Why are they stacked on top of each other just like a stack of pancakes? Hmm? And by the way, why are there no soil layers between the rock layers? I mean, soil builds up on top of rock. Don't you think there'd be some soil built up once in a while? Mm -hmm. Look, if you get a jar of dirt and rocks and gravel and sand and mud and shake it up and set it down, it settles into layers for you in a few minutes. It doesn't take long. How many have seen those things you buy at the mall with two pieces of glass and different colored sand in between? You know, you flip it over and it makes all kinds of layers just in a few seconds. It doesn't take long. I was preaching years ago in Union Center, South Dakota. Now, Union Center is right there. It's not even on the map. And South Dakota puts everything they can find on the map just to kind of fill in the white places, you know. Well, there were 40 people in the whole town. 38 of them came to church. The other two must have been pulling a calf, I reckon. I don't know. But boy, we had a great meeting, and the preacher said, Hey, Hovind, let's go down to Rapid City. They've got a bunch of dinosaurs in the museum there. I said, All right, I like dinosaurs. Let's go. So we all drove down to Rapid City. We came to this museum, and a guide met us at the door. He said, Hey, folks, would you like me to give you a tour? We said, That would be great, sir. Well, the first place we stopped on the tour was the geologic time chart. They have it lit up, and it's behind glass, and it's holy and sacred. Don't dare touch that thing, you know. So we're standing over there, and the guide said, Now, folks, this layer of rock right here is about 70 million years old. And it's so cool, because they always get that sanctimonious tone in their voice, you know. 70 million years old. Oh. <laughs> well, my daughter was 12 years old at the time. She raised her hand. She said, Mister, how do you know that layer is 70 million years old? He said, Honey, that's a good question. We tell the age of the layers by what types of fossils we find in them. They're called index fossils. And by the way, that's correct. That's what the textbook says. Scientists use index fossils to determine the age of rock layers. She said, Thank you, sir. We walked around the other side. We're standing over here, and the guide said, Now, folks, these bones are about 100 million years old. My daughter raised her hand again. She said, sir, how do you know those bones are 100 million years old? He said, well, honey, we tell the age of the bones by which layer they came from. She said, uh, sir, when we were standing over there, you told me you knew the age of the layers by the bones, and now you're telling me you know the age of the bones by the layers. She said, isn't that circular reasoning? I thought, wow, a chip off the old block. <laughs> that guy had the strangest look on his face. It was almost as if he were thinking. <laughs> he looked at my daughter. He looked at me. I wasn't about to help him. I thought, wow, this is going to be good. 
I have got to hear this. He looked back at my daughter. He said, wow, you're right. That is circular reasoning. He said, I never thought of that before. That fellow drove 50 miles one way that night to, hear me come, to come hear me speak in Union Center, South Dakota. The crowd swelled to 39. <laughs> we set up a chair in the aisle. Afterwards, he talked to me for an hour. He said, Hovind, is everything I believe about geology wrong? I teach this stuff at the college. I said, oh, no, 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 I like geology. I've got a huge fossil collection, rock collection, mineral collection. I teach earth science. I love studying geology. I said, but as far as the layers being different ages, I said, yes, sir, I'm sorry. That is all baloney. It's based on circular reasoning. I'll show you. Here's a textbook that tells the kids to date the rocks by the fossils. And on the very next page, it says date the fossils by the rocks. On the next page, and they don't catch it. It's a lie. It's circular reasoning. The intelligent layman has long suspected circular reasoning in the use of rocks to date fossils and fossils to date rocks. The geologist has never bothered to think of a good reply, feeling the explanations are not worth the trouble as long as the work brings results. Hmm. It cannot be denied from a strictly philosophical standpoint, geologists are arguing in a circle. The relative ages of rocks are determined by the organisms they contain. They, they date the rocks by the fossils and the fossils by the rocks. Ever since the beginning of the 19th century, Fossils have been and still are the best and most accurate method of dating and correlating the rocks in which they occur. Apart from very modern examples, which really are archaeology, I can think of no cases of radioactive decay being used to date fossils. They don't date fossils by potassium argon dating or carbon dating. That's not how they do it. Radiometric dating would not even be possible if the geologic column had not been erected first. There's no way simply to look at a fossil and say how old it is unless you know the age of the rocks it comes from. This is Niles Eldridge, one of the most famous evolutionists alive today. He said, and this poses something of a problem. Yeah, something poses a big problem, Niles. If we date the rocks by the fossils, how can we then turn around and talk about patterns of evolutionary change through time in the fossil record? Circular reasoning. This guy said the rocks do date the fossils, but the fossils date the rocks more accurately. <laughs> I think the cheese done fell out of his sandwich. That's what I think. Okay, he's... He's a few fries short of a Happy Meal. Mm -hmm. It's based on circular reasoning, okay? This guy said the charge of circular reasoning can be handled several ways. It can be ignored is not the proper concern of the public. It can be denied by calling down the law of evolution. It can be admitted as a common practice or avoided by pragmatic reasoning. But it is all based on circular reasoning. Actually, at the Scopes Monkey Trial, 1925, over here in Dayton, Tennessee. How far is Dayton from here, Steve? About 100 miles. 100 miles, okay. This is what they were going to use as evidence for evolution. The lowest layers are obviously the oldest. Page 275 of the court transcript. No, the oldest layers are not obviously the oldest. Did you know in still water, sediment layers settle out the bottom one first, and then the second one, and then the third one. That's correct. But in moving water, you can get five or six or ten layers to form simultaneously. They form from one end and travel across. So it's possible to have a fossil on the bottom that is younger than a fossil on top if it's moving water. There's a great video tape called Experiments in Stratification. It covers all that if you want more on that. Or get our video number six. We'll get more of that later. I like to ask evolutionists. I say, guys, your geologic column contains limestone uh, quite a few places. If I handed you a piece of limestone, how would you know if it's 100 million year old Jurassic limestone or 600 million year old Cambrian limestone? I mean, exactly what's the difference? They'd say, well, the only way to tell the difference is by the index fossils. Uh, that's precisely my point. They date the layers by the fossils. This textbook shows the kids a trilobite. And it says, boys and girls, trilobites make good index fossils. If a trilobite is found in a rock layer, the rock layer probably formed 500 to 600 million years ago. I don't think so. Somebody found a human shoe print where the guy with a shoe on had stepped on and smashed a trilobite. They asked evolutionists all over, how on earth could a human step on a trilobite? If trilobites lived 500 million years ago and man didn't get here till, you know, 3 million years ago and they didn't start, didn't start wearing shoes till 10,000 years ago, how could a human step on a trilobite? One atheist said, well, it's obviously. Uh, the only un answer would be that uh, aliens visited the planet 500 million years ago. <laughs> oh, them aliens will do it every time. <laughs> Another guy said, well, maybe there was a large trilobite shaped like a shoe that fell on a small one. <laughs> now, there are some big trilobites, okay, but I don't think they're shaped like a shoe. Actually, the trilobite has the most complicated eyeball ever. Trilobite eyes are unbelievable. And this is one of the first creatures to evolve.